The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Je John said to Jesus, Master, we saw a man who is not one of us, cutting out devils in your name. And because he was not one of us, we tried to stop him. But Jesus said, You must not stop him. No one who works a miracle in my name is likely to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you a cup of water to drink just because you belong to Christ, then I told you solemnly, he will most certainly not lose his reward. But anyone who is an obstacle to bring down one of these little ones who have faith would be best thrown into the sea with a great millstone round his neck. And if your hand should cause you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than to have two hands and go to hell, into the fire that cannot be put out. And if your foot should cause you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into, into life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eyes should cause you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worms doth not die, nor their fire go out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At a glance, the three portions of the gospel may seem unrelated. One, you have John telling Jesus, hey, these people cutting out devil, they are not part of our group, taught them, taught them. The second part is where Jesus says, if anyone gives, does something good because they are a follower of Christ, the reward is there. But the warning is also there. If any, however, if the opposite is done, that is, instead of helping, we make things worse, then it's better for us to be thrown into the sea. And the third part is about cutting off our limbs to prevent us from sinning so that we can go into heaven. Now, these three look very disjointed, but there is one single thread that goes run through these three, which is the committing of sin. Now, the first one, where the other person cutting out devil, what that, that got to do with committing sin? Now, <coughs> a few months ago, we had two <coughs> exorcists coming from Philippines. They went to St. Ignatius Church, PJ, and they had a two, one week session on explaining all these things about exorcism and all that. And they said, they mentioned a lot of things that lay people were not very happy about and in fact they became very angry and very dissatisfied because there were two things i think few among other things they said lay people not supposed to form exorcism and they are not supposed to do laying of hand during the charismatic session and also they are not to pray in tongues now the part i want to focus on is the exorcism and the laying of hand because this got to do with the first part of the gospel the reason why we say this is because, number one, the act of exorcism or laying of hand is something which is handed down by tradition. When Jesus appointed the twelve, who are these twelve? Their successors are the popes and the bishops of today. And they in turn ordained disciples who became the priests of today. So it is an unbroken tradition handed down the power given by Christ to cast out devils. But even then, among the priests, only one or two is appointed. And they had to be appointed by the bishop with the backing of the church, simply because we cannot do things alone. And how does it relate to sin is, even the smallest speck of sin in a person can cause the devil to use it against us. Which is why we don't allow all these things, whether it's a lay person or a priest or a religious, it's the same. 
because it is a dangerous thing to do. We are not perfect. All of us are sinners, even the Pope. Are nothing to be scandalized about. All of us are sinners. So even if we do frequent confession, the slightest sin that we may not realize in our thoughts or in our hearts, that can cause the devil to use that against us and turn us against our faith. And you say this is, this is something which we need to bear in mind. Now, the second and third part also got to do with ourselves. Catholics, Christians, we are always say, people always say that we never practice what we preach. We like to tell people a lot of things. You know, we tell this, we say this, we say that. We say to our children, we say to our friends, most of our children, don't do this, don't do this, do this, do this. And then when they ask why, oh, because I say so. It doesn't work that way anymore. We need to reason. We need to say why. And if we are able to say it, then we better make sure we can do it. Because if by saying something, by acting out in a different way, we cause other people, perhaps they don't lose their faith, but perhaps they begin to question their faith or we scandalize them. And this is more so with uh, people who are the front line, you know, priests, religious, bishops, leaders. These are the people that are visible, people see. So that Jesus says, if any of us who are at the forefront, who are responsible for the growth of, the spiritual growth of a person, instead of helping them, we incapacitate them, then woe to us. Then it is on us, not on them. And the third part is the cutting off of limbs. Now, you want to take this literally, okay. So let's say our hands cause us to sin, we cut both off. Our legs cause us to sin, we cut both off. Okay. Same with our eyes, our mouth, our nose, our ears. Okay, you want to get that. But my question is this. If our minds cause us to sin, are we going to take the brain out? If our hearts cause us to sin, am I going to go for an operation to take my heart out and put, it, put, put a mechanic, mechanical one in? No, of course not. It is not about physically cutting off limbs. That's not going to work. Because we can cut off every part of our body, but the mind and the heart is still there. And that is the most difficult one. Because that is the one we cannot control. Because sub subconsciously, things may just appear. So what do we do? The cutting off of limbs and all that is a figurative expression to say that we cut off access to the occasion of sin. All of us are surrounded by temptation, challenges, occasions of sins are everywhere. They have to look very far. Just look at the small little device that we keep in our pocket. Every 5-10 seconds, we take it out, check something. And on the days we are free, we just take out, take out the phone, open one single app, and before we know it, the whole day is gone. We just swipe, 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 swipe. The juicier, the better. And that's a fact. So, the cutting off of limbs is, in a sense, to cut off our access to all this. To have the discipline and habit to say, no, I shall not go into this direction. I shall uh, not allow myself to fall into this. Granted, we will fall. No matter how strong our resolve are, we will fall. Because we are human. Our flesh is weak. But, it's not so much of falling and just lying down there and just continue. It is about getting up and continuing on with the journey. One of my spiritual directors, or rather one of the confessors that I went to when I was in Australia, he says this about committing frequent sins. He says, sin is like fall, you are falling off a cliff. And then suddenly you see a branch jutting out, you grab hold then you are able to stop yourself from falling. Now that's the sacrament of reconciliation. Then, and also our resolve. But sooner or later, either the branch will break or our hands become tired and we let go. And we fall again. And we find another branch and we grab it again. Every single branch that we grab gives lessens the possibility of 
plunging down, ending our life. So it, we grab onto every single branch until we are able to land safely on the ground. And that's why we encourage people to come for reconciliation. I don't like to use the word confession because that sounds like going to jail or something to confess your crimes. That's not a good word to use. We use reconciliation simply because Fan too strong. We use reconciliation simply because when we sin, it's not about hurting God. We cannot hurt God. Anyone who tells you that when we sin, we hurt God is a heretic, is a heresy. Because God is beyond our, our hurt. What we do, we hurt ourselves and we hurt our relationship with God. Which is why when we have reconciliation, it to reconcile ourselves back to God and to one another. And so when we think of occasions of sin, when we think of how we have sinned, it is always important to come back to God. We are not worthy to receive absolution. None of us are. But it is God who gives us the grace to be worthy to receive pardon. And that is an act of love from God. We cannot buy his forgiveness, but we atone for what we do, which is why we have penance and we have our contrition. If we think that by leaving the confessional box, we become clean and never sin again, that is another bigger sin. Because just like we're wearing clothes, we wash our clothes, we hand it dry, it's nice and clean, but you get dirty again and we have to wash it again. So it's the same for us. The, the thing is, we just need to keep doing it. And so, we need to pray for the grace to acknowledge that we need God in our life and that if we do not repent and continue to live the way we do if we, are, we go on sinning, we are opening the door, the, our doors not to God, but evil spirit. So, this is something that we don't think about. But... For our spiritual life, this is something very important because we not only care for our bodies and our mind, we care for our souls as well. And so we pray for the grace of the Holy Spirit to always remind us of the need to come back to God and also to strengthen us in our resolve so that we always choose the path that leads to eternal life.